Hey guys, Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Welcome back to the shop. It's good to see you. So this time around, we're going to do a primitive. So we're going to take some old wooden bobbin spindles, industrial things, and do some iron work to them. Should be fun. Stick with me, guys. We'll talk at the other end. Thanks. Okay, guys. So we got this industrial wooden bobbin. We paid a buck for it. It was a lamp, and we have some wrought iron. Came from a fence. Um, and he was around an old cemetery back east. Bought it from a guy. Anyway, we're going to cut the ends off this stuff. Now, this project that I'm doing, I'm going to use wrought iron. You could certainly use mild steel. And you could use anything for a base. I just thought uh, these old bobbin spindle things would look cool with some iron on them. As best I can tell, they're from the 1940s, something like that somewhere between turn of the century and the 1940s, but who knows? They don't really have any numbers on them. Okie doke. So we're going to reduce this. This is three quarter inch square and we need to get it down to half inch round. And one of these, we're going to leave a little lump on the end, a little section so that we can um, turn that into a candle holder. These rush lamps are nothing more really than a small pair of tongs and they typically have some sort of a candle holder on them because uh, I don't know anybody who uses rushes anymore as lighting. I suppose you could. I should probably take some time one day and try to figure out exactly how to make a rush or a rush lamp. Hmm. And Scrappy did a pretty good job of uh, getting us down to where we needed to get it to. It didn't take too long to get it down to a little over half inch. And then we used our uh, spring swedge. To get it nice and round and, and even. This is pretty good wrought iron for being a fence. It... Um, in a couple of areas here, I worked it a little bit cold. Probably shouldn't have. It didn't do too badly, though. I had one little tiny crack, but I hit it with a torch and uh, just gave it a little weld, and it came out fine. I just run this through the spring switch. So this project really didn't take much time at all. It. Um, a lot of the work was in reducing the material from three quarters down to half inch round so that we could start to build our tongs. So if you do this and you start with you know half inch material, it went pretty quickly. This is only a, I don't know, a couple hour project even with reducing the uh, wrought iron. So it's a fun afternoon project kind of thing. And I've got both of these in the forge at the same time, and I'm just going back and forth between the two. All right, there we go. So I'm going to form my little tongs, and we're going to make them a little bit stylized, I guess you could call it. Between the jaw and the boss, we're going to leave a little bit of a stem to get those jaws up in the air and give it a little more stretched out look to it. And we'll narrow those jaws down into a you know, sort of a blunt point. Give them a little bit better look. They don't have to hold much. If anybody ever puts anything in there, it'll probably be a match so they can light their candles. There we go. Get the other half going and match it. And I removed a couple of heats here. This uh, was getting to be a bit of a long video. <laughs> so we took a little bit out. But if you want to see me make tongs, I've got plenty of videos on making tongs as well. So you can check out those in the other videos. Now you see that little area that I uh, stretched that out. 
got the jaw up away from the boss area the hinge area whatever you prefer to call it and we're going to match this with the other half and to me it gives it a little more of a, a delicate lamp look rather than just a uh, pair of tongs but that's just me Let me get some holes punched in these guys and we'll go about working on the candle holder on the other end I was going into some dangerous territory here I worked this a little bit cold to get these slugs punched out of here but I didn't split anything I was worried about cracking or splitting that wrought iron in that hinge area but it seemed to work out okay smooth this little section out here and then we're going to give it its initial flatten under the power hammer and we'll get over to the anvil with a cross peen hammer and uh, start spreading that thing out so the progression that I learned as I was learning to be a blacksmith is you cross peen to spread and then you go to a rounding hammer and then if you want to go to a flat hammer after that to give it a little more flat away from the rounding hammer that's your progression to spread it now I'm spreading this and then rounding hammer and spreading and rounding hammer now this piece of rod is the size of the candle that I'm going to use I put a mark on it, roll it over, and I can tell when I'm getting close. And when it was all said and done, I was right there, but I could have gone just a little further with it. But I was afraid I was going to um, split that wrought iron. It was getting pretty thin. So you're going to notice that I'm not chiseling the end off. I'm folding it over. It's got a nice little rounded look to it. And I do this when I make sockets on things. And I'll bend this socket so that that folded area is on the outside. It gives it a little bit of a, I don't know, sort of a draped iron look around the outside of the socket. And it reinforces that end. You don't have to worry about filing it back. And it took quite a few heats to get this socket into shape. And we're not going to weld the seam together. We're simply going to fold that back up on the stem and hide the seam between the, um, uh, what you would call the handle, I suppose. And the candle holder cup. And we should be able to tuck that right in there, get it nice and close, and you'll never see that seam. I've never had much luck welding those cups anyway. The um, When you're doing a tool and it's like a chisel and it's much heavier, you can forge weld those together not too badly, but this is a little thin. So we're just going to hide the seam. So anyway guys, this is kind of a, uh, a little bit of a beginner project. It was kind of fun to do, just sort of relax behind the anvil, have a little fun, not worry too much about it. So if you want to tackle this, you could certainly use mild steel. You don't have to use wrought iron. And you could use anything for a base. You can make a longer stem on that uh, other half of the tong section, and you could drill a hole in a 2x4. It really wouldn't matter. 
It's um, they're fun to build. People like them. They sell really well. At least they did back in the day when I was doing street fairs. And uh, once in a while, you have to do one of these simple things that doesn't have too much planning. Just sort of, I just sort of freeform this. It, there was no plan or anything like that. So we got these guys all worked out. We're gonna get a ribbon on them. We'll get some beeswax on them. We're just gonna put straight beeswax. I like that kind. It's um, when it starts to cool off while it's still warm, you can wipe it down with a rag and it gives it a nice sheen. Protects the metal really well. There we go. So let's get this thing assembled. Just gonna tap it down inside. That hole was just under half inch. We got lucky. And there you go. A little candlelight for ya. I'm gonna take a look at this thing all on all four sides. Very simple, but a lot of fun. Alright guys, there you go. So sometimes a simple project can be fun and uh you know just use the basic tools kind of thing anyway there you go it was kind of fun and uh i think somebody will get a kick out of that somewhere so that's it so we kept it pretty simple didn't want to give it too many twists or curves or whatever just to kind of match the old wooden bobbin and uh it seemed to work out okay still got the sticker on it dollar it says has a short used to be a lamp somebody turned it into i think it looks much better with the iron work on it and it's kind of fun but great sitting on somebody's table anyway there you go guys thanks for stopping by big dog forge really appreciate it if you haven't yet subscribed you might think about that like and share the video it's always helpful to the uh, little cause we got going here and uh thanks I want to say thanks to all my patrons and uh, all you new subscribers as well. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for everything. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you soon. Be safe. Bye-bye now.